says, the Gemara starts with the words, Rav Yosef Amar. Now, bet and with bet, to line, second to the last line, Rav Yosef Amar, Rav Yosef Amar, Rav Yosef said, Gezeira, it's a uh, rabbinical prohibition. What is a rabbinical prohibition? Which specific rabbinical prohibition are we talking about? That been, we've been talking about all this time. What would what were we talking about? The Moksa, Moksa. The Moksa. No. no egg, eggs. Egg that was laid on Yom Tov. Oh, okay. We are talking about egg, and we're trying to find out why it's asur. Mm-hmm. According to the hello. Actually, according to Bechamai, it's asur. But you see, Bechamai over there was Lechumra. The he was yeah, it's reverse. He was most stringent. The exception. There are very few exceptions in this mission. Beis Shammai is more machmer. He's more... Beis... Sh- Wait, one second. Beis Shammai is more machmer? If, here. Um, I'm sorry. On the contrary. Oh, you're saying right. saying it's allowed. Correct. Beis Hill is saying it's allowed. Over here, Beis Shammai is machmer. Yeah, right. Misha right. is right. Sorry, right. my right. mistake. That's fine. Okay, so, yes. Beis Shammai is usually Mahmer, Beis Hillel is Mekal. Over here, Beis Hillel is Mahmer. So we want to know why this egg is, is, is Asur. We're going we're gonna to go back a little bit. We already had two, two answers. We're going to have to go back to them because we're going to put all the answers we have at some point together and examine which is the best answer. Right. Mm-hmm. But not yet. We didn't finish yet listing all the answers. The third answer is Amar Rav Yosef Gezeira Mishum Peirot Anushrim. It's a rabbinical decree. It's Asur Medrabana because of fruit, fruit that fell off a tree. Off the tree on Yom Tov. In other words, the egg that was laid on Yom Tov is Asur because the fruits that fell off the tree on Yom Tov are Asurim. But let's ask him a basic question. Where, why is fruit uh, sur? Yes, you, you know this. We said that last time. You might, because you might pluck it off on right. on Yom Tov. Okay. Or Shabbos. So, so uh, right. So it's important to know that the fruit that fell off the tree on Yom Tov themselves is only midrabanan. <laughs> The right, right, and what would be the next question of the Gemara? It's a Madarabana, not a Madarabana. Yeah, it's one, it's the egg. Two levels. Is Asur because of fruit that fell off? But since the fruit that fell off, themselves only Asur. Madarabana, because the fruit that are begging, you might take them. Why would we make and one? And we usually make all Madarabana, not Madarabana. No, we never, we, the, logically speaking, there, should, concept, there right? shouldn't be in the Rabbanon and the Rabbanon. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. The Rabbanon is always on the right. Where do we find this? In the first Mishnah in Perkiavot. Because it says... Siyag Latorah. Asu Siyag Latorah. Uh, Siyag Latorah. You're supposed to be making a fence around the Torah. But why would you... But the fence around the fence is not prescribed, it's not in the Mishnah. You could make a fence around the fence, but Torah says we don't make it. Gemara says we don't make it. Amr right. Abaye, Pirot Nashim, we're still on that line, bottom line. Abaye asks a question. Pirot Nashim, fruits that fell, Tamam Ai, what's the reason? Gizera Hashem Yalev Yitlash. What does Yale mean? Uh, next page, up. Top so line on next page. page? Base? Right now it's Gimel. Gimel. We just switched to Gimel. Oh, okay. In our school, you have to turn a few pages. to <laughs> get the next page. Yala means? Yala, go up. Yeah. Go up. Yitlosh means to pluck. So we're saying Gezera, it's Asur. The fruit that fell down is Asur because maybe he'll go up and he'll pluck it out. Yale and pluck it out, which is the right now. So Gimir says, he gufa gezeira. The fruit itself, fruit that fell off, is itself is gezeira. It's midrabanan. Va'anan. And us, nikom, we're going to get up and we're going to make nikzor gezeira le gezeira. We're going to make a gezeira le gezeira. What does gezeira le gezeira mean? Can I just ask a question? A gezeira for a gezeira. Yeah, that we don't do that. Yes, question. On Yom Tov, though. Um, o- o- ochel, uh, 
Ochel Nefesh, right? Yes, Ochel Nefesh. Wouldn't you be able to pluck? Because then it's kind of like, you're using it for food. Would that be a, why is that a problem? Oh, excellent question, excellent question. Yes, we know that on uh, Yom Tov, Malechet Ochel Nefesh is Mutar. Now, uh, believe it or not, in order to produce a piece of bread, right. we have ten malachot. Threshing. And it, was, it starts with what? Plowing the land. Mm -hmm. Second one is sowing, putting the grain inside. Mm -hmm. after, after that, when it grows, you cut it off. It's called ketzera. So ketzera, ketzera and plucking off the tree is the same really mm -hmm. isur. After that, it's not even an, it's not over yet. So you cut it off. Then you have to do dash. You have to extract the, uh, the small kernel from the chaff that's uh, protecting it. How do you do it? By threshing. That's called threshing. Heating it, and it comes out. After that, you still have to somehow separate the chaff from the grain. So you throw it into the air, and the wind moves the chaff that's lighter to the side. And the grain that's heavier falls down. That's called winnowing or zore. After you already separated the chaff, but the heavy grain that fell down still fell down together with the heavy, fell down with heavy stones and twigs. But there is much less in comparison, in proportion to the grain, this, the stones and twigs is much less. So what do you do? You by manually, by hand, you go and you take out the stones and, and twigs from the pile of grain. That's called what? Borer. Mm -hmm. borer. Borer means selecting. That's why on Shabbat, we're not allowed to take bad from good. But taking good from bad is, is mutar. Why? Because in the field, borer looked exactly like that. You took twigs and stones, which was much less bad, something you don't want. From the pile of good. After that, you're supposed to store it. It's called memarea. You're supposed to take some of the grain after that and grind it. That's called tochen, grinding. After that, you have flour. Flour is still not edible item. You are supposed to mix it with water, which is called kneading dash. And then when you have dough, you put it into the oven and bake it. And it becomes bread. So there is 10 malachot that are associated with making bread. That's why, by the way, Brachav Hamotzi Lechem in Aretz has 10 words in it. Ruch Atar Hashem Elokeinu Melech Ha'olam Hamotzi Lechem Min Ha'aretz. And also, it's, uh, it says in the Halal. How many words? 10 words? 10 words. Hamotzi Lechem in Aretz. 10 words, each one corresponding to a separate malacha that was necessary to bring this one piece of bread to your table. Besides for that, it says in Tosafot, in Masachet Brachot, that you're supposed to put ten fingers on your bread when you make a bracha on Shabbat. And each one also corresponds to Malach. Now, it says in the Gemara that really, Midaraita, all ten of these are permitted on Yom Tov. All of them? All ten are permitted on Yom Tov. Because they all are necessary to produce bread. Mm. However, it's a little bit it's a little bit illogical that will you actually plow right. your field on Yom Tov, sow, and then reap and but have the bread from the that? Of, no? What? Is it only for the day of? You can't do it for the day tomorrow. Not only that. Yes, you're right. You're only allowed to for that day. And it usually steps. takes six months for the for the for the thing to grow. But all these steps don't happen in a day. No. Then they're not gonna you grow mushrooms. That's it. If you want to grow a mushroom, it grow in six hours. Not. Right. So, what if it's something you're gonna use for that day, like a mushroom? Okay. Good. However, but it's not all those things most that. items, you're right. But everything else besides the mushrooms, you're not gonna be able to grow in one day. Period. So, not only that. Chachamim saw that even if you will, even if you will some, somehow venture to do it, all this malachot like plowing, like ripping, kotzer, like winnowing, they are being done a lot in one place. You can't do a little bit. 
You, like, you have to plow the whole field. You have to, uh, you have to reap the whole field at once. So Chachamim saw that a person will be busy the whole Yom Tov with this Malachot, if we allow them. So they prohibited them. And they only allowed from Lash Ve'elech, from kneading. Now it's less to Malachot, kneading and baking, as far as bread is concerned. What about mixing? Everything be- oh, that's kneading, right. that's kneading. Oh. Everything before that, even grinding, is not permissible because how do you grind? You don't grind a little bit like on the coffee maker, you grind a little bit. No. You grind a lot. Because you grind a lot in one shot, they prohibited grinding. So you can't make with John on, on you know, the grind it? So the answer what is... What about shifting an animal? That requires like... Let's take one. Let's take one question at a time. So, question on Bujang. So you, you're right. In the halacha, it says that grinding really applies to grains. Real grinding mm-hmm. is grain. But you, let's say you take this eggplant, which you roast it and you just mash it. It's it's permitted for that day because it's not the malacha of grinding. Okay. Yeah, because grain is hard like a rock. It's like rice. It's like. Not, not, not only that, Chachomim permitted to grind spices like peppers. You know, pepper mm-hmm. comes from pepper peppercorn. Part. Yeah, yeah. That's you have to, you have to grind. They said that anything that will lose its taste if you do it from day before, you're allowed to do it on, on, on Yom Tov. On, uh, in other words, as far as grinding spices. Some allowed to use a grinder on, on Yom like a pepper grinder? I thought that wasn't. Um, <laughs> oh. Pepper grinder, yes. If. We have to double check if today okay. the same applies. Okay. But why would it? If it if it's gonna become more dissipated. Oh, you're saying if the pepper loses its pot like its flavor. Its flavor, yes. I don't know if it's true. Although you know there is a reason why they use those uh, grinders yeah, no, because it's much, better, it's much different than yeah, if you just true. ground it. It releases the aroma immediately. You know, as you break the peppercorn. Besides, okay, okay, so in that case, it yeah. gives you aroma also. In that case, it's mutar. It says it's shachanero. Okay, now. Um, Back to your question, Mishra. You said what? Well, shechting. No, that also takes. If you shecht an animal, how long does that take? It's like three shechting. Shecht, clean. That, that we do separate? in one day. That, no, we, could, that we could do in one day. <coughs> Kitty is not so, is not the same as mm-hmm. as producing growing. Does it doesn't matter whether it's a lamb or a cow or whatever. It's all one day. It's fine. You know, it's hard. Of course, the bigger the animal, the harder it is. The longer, it's more work. The more work, but it's still much different and it's doable in one day. We're going to learn all this halachot. For example, when you shaft an animal, its hide, its skin, is mukta. So, how do you uh, move it around? You have to actually, when you take it off, you have to move it. As you're taking it off, and you're producing this in the skin. So, but it's a different there There is a lot of interesting ways. Uh, what about pl- chicken? I, ch- I shaft the chicken. Am I allowed to pluck the feathers off? Yeah. Each feather is a mukta. So how am I allowed to take it out? So, so we're, we're going to learn all these things. And um, also, it sounds like it's a different the Rabbanan to pick something on Yom Tov versus Shabbos, according to what we just said, because it's a different type of the Rabbanan. Meaning, but you Yom see, Tov, the prohibited it. They prohibited it even on Yom Tov. Not only they prohibited originally to pluck it, which was mutar. Oh, you're saying on Shabbos? No, Yom Tov I'm talking about. Oh no, but I'm saying on Shabbos, right? <clears throat> Originally, we're not allowed to we're not allowed to pick up uh, pick fruits, right? Or, because it's a malacha. A malacha, real malacha. So it's it's a malacha der the raisa, and then you, oh, I see, you're saying only only on Yom Tov is it der abanim. Correct. Uh huh. So, so what's the question right now? <clears throat> question now: Why would we ask her? Prohibit an egg because of the f- fruit that fell off the tree. Fruit, fruit that fell off the tree itself is only midrabanan. It's pro- prohibited midrabanan. It's a gazera. Why would we make a gazera to gazera? The more answer is kula had a gazera here. It's all one gazera. Yeah, it's kind of what I said earlier. I think it's the same concept when you guys were discussing why is. Uh, why are you putting a fence in the fence? Uh, Muksa and Muksa, right? Right. Um, 
it's the same concept, pulling, removing, taking fruit from a tree or taking an egg out of a chicken Rabbi, or using the, the egg from a chicken. <laughs> I'm like, where is it? <laughs> Wrong Gemara, okay. Look, I should have figured it out. <laughs> better, better I'll sooner than later, you know. Let's say at the end of the year, you're like, oh, one second, it was a wrong Gemara all along. I think it's the same concept. The, it's the same prohibition. It's not a different prohibition. The egg from a chicken, it's, you're a good, you're, so you're not allowed to take uh, fruit from its source, right? Like, so like, let's say you have an apple and it's growing on a tree, it's mm-hmm, connected, mm-hmm. you can't remove it. Same thing with a chicken egg. Um, but It's f- food from the source. But hold on, but you, you, you can't, can you remove an egg from a chicken until it's, until it's ready to, you know, like you can't physically squeeze an ch- egg out of a chicken, right? No. Until it's ready right. uh, to get laid. <laughs> but but with an apple you can. I mean you could walk up to the apple tree and you could you know talk on an apple. Uh, but what's the gazera here? Taking a fruit that fell or removing the fruit? The Torah says removing, right? But the gazera, what Rabbanon prohibited, is picking up. He's just the, picking something that's already detached and laying on the floor. Uh huh. Well, yeah. Then in that case, it's one hundred percent the same concept. Okay. Good. Okay. Let's go on. Let's try to examine another case. What was the question? Who, who said it's a gezer? It's a, a mozart, How, mozart. Originally, we said that it's gezer le gezer. Why? The answer is it's one gezer. No, but what was the logic? Why would you say that? Because superficially, if you look at it on the, on the, sur- on the surface, it's just not the same case. It's the not, egg and the fruit, you're yeah, saying? Yeah. yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it's, it's not literally the same. It's not the same know. case. But it's the same concept. It's the same idea. If you abstract, remember we were discussing abstraction. Abstract means you don't focus on the actual details. The letter of fo- the law about you, the idea. But, no, of what you means focus that. on the concept behind it. On right. What, stands, what it is really uh, conceptually. So uh, conceptually, this is fruit that was detached from its for, uh, source. Just like the egg detached from. But its that was oh, so that's my my question is the xero. Is you know, uh-huh. they made a zero that you're not allowed to pick from the ground. That's a zero, but pick up from the ground. Well, that's already on Yom Tov, on Yom Tov, right? You would, you would originally you would be allowed to pluck, right? You would be, you, 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 you would be allowed to pluck. No, you wouldn't be allowed to pluck. On I'll tell you why. Why? To explain, because plucking is. The same thing as Ketzira. Right, but that was another Xera. That's a Xera already. Origi- originally, you're saying it would be allowed, but because the Rabbana made a special, it's a separate, it's a different Xera. Uh, well, yeah, but no, we're saying that it's, um, it's, um, a, a Chachomen prohibit, you're right. On, on Yom Tov, the actual Ketzira, it's a different reason, ripping is still with Rabbana. Uh-huh. But they still prohibited fruit that fell down. Interesting. Because okay. if if you wouldn't prohibit it, it would bring to dis, mm-hmm. uh, to transgress the okay. the blocking also. Gemara says, Rabbi Yitzchak Kama, Rabbi Yitzchak said the fourth answer, Gezera Meshum Mashkin Shazavu. It's because a juice that oozed out from a uh, fruit. In other words, let's say I have. Oranges, I have apples, I have figs, I have dates. This veg, this fruit could uh, have juice inside. And let's say some juice oozed out, collected into a plate. They were in the plate. Mm-hmm. And then some juice collected in the plate. Am I allowed to drink it? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine? So if you have fruit on the plate, you could eat the fruit, there's no problem. But if the, the juice came out by itself onto the plate, you know how to drink it. Hello. So when you make a salad, you can't drink that tomato juice that's on there? You know, like after you have like an Israeli salad? like like Over there, it's not tomato juice. Chopped. chopped Over salad. there, you have oil and you have <coughs> other things already. Uh, you have maybe vinegar. So it's not 
just the juice. juice. It has to be clear that this juice came from this fruit. Uh -huh. Then it's prohibited. It's a gazette, and maybe you'll squeeze it. Mm. So that you don't come to squeeze fruits, they prohibited something that came out by itself. Just like fruit that fell, fell off by itself, we prohibit it. It's uh, because maybe person will plot. Same thing with this juices. Maybe he'll squeeze. Maybe he'll squeeze. So Gemara is going to say uh, same steps like we had before. Abai is going to ask. It's a gazera la gazera because it's Rabban. Amar le Abai, we have four lines from the top. Mashkir shazavu ta'amamai, the fruit that just was oozed out. What's the reason? Gazera. Shema yischot. Shema yischot. Which word here means to squeeze? Shema means, no, yischot, right? Yischot. Shema means maybe. Maybe. Yischot means he will squeeze. Sechita. Sechita is to, 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 to squeeze. Yeah, so, I make? In the, no, even in Hebrew. in Hebrew. So now it says, Higufa Gezeira. It's only it gives the Rabbanon to uh, drink the f juice that, that oozed out. It's in Gufa body? Gufa, gufa means by its body, but Gufa means also itself. Uh -huh. So he Gufa, it itself is Gezeira. We're going to get up and make Gezeira to Gezeira. Kula Chale Gezeira. Everything is one gazera. Each one of them one gazera. Are we on the same page? I'm just not sure I understand. How is an egg compared to this? I'm not sure. I, I, can, you, can you explain? One second. Yes, you coming to... No, but how is an egg so, similar to squeezing? To having juice from a fruit. Yeah. If you thinking that you're allowed that egg. Let's see. The fact that you can is good. Because you can't have the fruit okay, of the squeezed you juice. Uh -huh. You can't have the egg of the chicken. Uh -huh. It's the fruit of the chicken. You understand, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, a, a derivative of something. Okay. Abstract, uh, ab abstractly, it's the same concept as I got what we did earlier with the uh, pulling the fruit uh -huh. or squeezing chicken the juice. juice. Chicken juice. <clears throat> chicken juice. Egg juice. No, no, no. This is first you should have. First you should have. Open the Gemara. Then you're going to get into the exactly. debate. You're going to get into the discussion. Chicken and juice. Chicken juice. Doesn't sound too appropriate. Okay. So how about that? But I don't understand what the... By a chicken, by a by a, by juice, you might squeeze... You might squeeze... Um, you might reach for the fruit. You might squeeze, you might squeeze the fruit. Okay, but by chicken, what are you going to do? You're going to... Okay, and that came out. That's what I asked a minute ago. I'm like, okay, you're going to squeeze the egg out of the chicken? Right, so what's the... Uh, yeah, you never did that? You would take the chicken go. So, okay, so again, Rabbi Right. I want to move on a little. Okay. Okay? Gemara, it continues, and Gemara is going to tell us... He's just bringing out the same examples over and over. No, 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 we're finished with that. We had, so far, really basically three answers. And now we're going to examine why one is better than the other. And we're going to say, why Chachomim who give... Let, let, it's like this, it's interesting. There's an interesting rule in Torah. If you have three answers or two answers, even only two answers, why do you have two answers? Why do you have answer number one? Why do you have answer, answer number two? For two different situations. Or no, two, no. Two, two different lessons, like two. Two examples of the same result. And to learn two different things. Most of the time, I'll tell you the most simple approach. And that is that the reason why second answer exists is because there's something wrong with the first answer. Uh -huh. Because really, if you would have, everything would be great with the first answer. What example? We wouldn't what have to. Second? Maybe sometimes there is... Um, additional answer but in the case where they agree sometimes we have shot we have a situation where really it's not a machloket it's just two different aspects of the same thing it's not a machloket but as far as answers most of the time the reason why there is someone comes and says, gives a second answer is because he doesn't hold of the first answer doesn't hold of the first answer means that he would not say the first answer. He says the second answer, but he would not subscribe to the first answer. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a supportive argument, the second or third answer. It's not more support to your original argument. Supporting you're saying support that, that you're supporting the original answer by bringing a second and a third and a fourth example. 
to make the same point. That's not what you're saying. You're saying that the guy bringing the second and third and fourth example is because he doesn't agree with the previous one. Correct. So, no. Let's now, we're going to uh, jag your memory a little bit. We need to f- remember what was the first answer and what was the second answer. Well, third we just saw now, today. <coughs> and then we're going to ask the following question. What was wrong with the first answer that we had to give the second answer? And now we're going to ask the question, what was wrong with the second answer that we had to give the third answer? So the first one was the chicken and the egg. The second one was pulling the fruit. Well, you're speaking our language right now. One second, no, no, no. What was the answer? Okay. Yeah. I'll, also, I'll remember, I'll remind you the question. The example is the same. What was, no, what was the actual answer? Well, not Muxa, Muxa. The, the, the oh, answer yes, the Muxa. code word, code word for the first answer is Muktsa. Code word for the second answer is Hachana. Hachana is preparation. Is preparation. And the code word for the third answer is Gezer. Ah, Gezer, okay. Now, let's now decode all these words, you know. Uh, one word here, one word here, one word here. What does it all mean? What does, does Muqtza mean? Again, we wanted to find out why egg that was laid on Yom Tov is Asur. Mm-hmm. So, first answer is the code word Muqtza. Muqtza means why? That Chachomim said that since it's not in the realm of your... Why is it... Oh, let, me, let me back up a little bit. Why is it Muqtza? What's wrong with it? It's food. What, we didn't plan to what problem it. can we find with it to call it Muqtza? It wasn't. It appeared. It say. appeared out of nowhere. Basically. It wasn't in your realm no, of uh, no idea. reality. Yeah, it wasn't part of your world. Right at the onset of Yom Tov, it only appeared later. Right. And Chachamim say something that's not part of the world is Muktzah, right? right? It was set. As, it wasn't set aside for Yom Tov, right? That's the that's the idea. Not part of the world. Not, wasn't set aside for Yom Tov. Well, it wasn't set. It, no, the reason why it wasn't set aside, even if I would want to set it aside, I would not be able to set it aside. Because I, it was not part of my world. Okay. But it's in your domain. I still, I remember I was at a hard time with this. It's your property. It's your chicken. It's your chicken coop. Whatever's in there is yours. Everything within it, within your property is yours. You're entitled to it. You're entitled to eat it. Okay, so in order for me to understand this, hold on, I have hold one on, question. Hold on. No? It doesn't apply. So, yeah, I have a question no, to answer this question. Oh, okay, let's leave it. I, let's say, forget the egg, right? I get the concept of the egg. What if a chicken out of nowhere appeared in your coop, an extra chicken? Like flu in or something. Yeah, that period. You wake up one morning, it's there. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to... According Actually, to remind me, I have a very good story about that. It's later <laughs> I'll, later. I'll go say later. It's an unbelievable story. But anyway, yeah, it's good. Yeah, chicken. So chicken appear, right? You had 10 chickens. No, you had you knew chickens. that you had 10. You and then chickens. one day you come in, and you open up, you have 11 you chickens. You wouldn't this, be able to this, eat that chicken. This third chicken is nice, fat, and juicy. Perfect. Yom Actually, oh, well, the story was awesome. Right? <laughs> so, what's, what's, according to this... If I understand correctly, you can't touch it. That means he miscounted the day before he was so big he was. <laughs> well, then you could claim, you, you're right, you're right, you're right. Um, then you could claim it wandered in. It's not like it, oh, we're not talking about it, like magic here, right? Not talking about, it's not, it's not so common that this should happen. But if it happens, then we, then we will probably say, since any, any way you have to designate food for Yom Tov, like you said, if that's the logic, here, this was not designated, so that's it. Right? Is that the case? Fine. It's not the case. It's no. not the case. But it's but it's going to help us. Okay. It's going to help us. The case is the egg. Right. We know. found the egg. Mark is asking. You knew that the egg is going to be laid because you. The probability is, truthfully, every single day, in the chicken coop, there's going to be at least one or two new eggs, depending how many chickens you have. But chicken lay eggs every other day, so you're going to have. If you have two chickens. You're gonna have an egg every, every single day. day. Every mm-hmm. single day. So now, uh, Mark is asking. I know that it's gonna come. Plus, it's in the making. It's it's not like it, it was in your realm because during the day before, it started being created. The answer is okay. Let's just put all these questions to rest by saying that your projection, the fact that you could see it in your mind's eye that I know the future, my vision is, is going to be there. <laughs> Probability tells me that it's going to be there. My experience. Is, no. or exp- whatever it is, it doesn't help us here. It doesn't mean anything. It has to be actually in the world. Okay. 
That's all. What about Mun? Mun came before Shabbos, right? That's why the yeah. Mun had to come before. What about Yom Tov? Well, did Mun have to come before before Yom Tov? They say that the Mun didn't. Uh, Mun, uh, I remember learning about this. Mun did not come on Yom Tov either. What Yom Tov might be celebrating it? then? Uh, they had Yom Tov. Shavuot. Shavuot, 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 Shavuot was the Yom Tov. Yeah, Pesach was Yom Tov. Oh, and right. all the Yom Tovs. But that would be a problem, right? So if Mun so would fall on Yom Tov. Come on. Uh, let's say Mun would fall on Yom Tov. You wouldn't be able to eat it, right? Because it appeared out of yeah. the reality. Yeah, probably right. 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 Similar, yeah. right? Similar idea, yeah. All the Yom Tovs. Yeah, it's pretty much right away. So, so maybe that's why it didn't come. Look at the of the clouds that happened 40 years later. Yeah, sure, that's what it is. After the 40 years. No, the clouds stopped coming when Aaron um, uh, Cohen died, no? Or Miriam. Clouds. Uh, clouds? I don't, I don't know. Aaron. Yeah, so once Aaron passed away, um, Okay, guys, I have something important to, to bring out. Let's move on. Let's okay. not get digressed. Now, let me ask you this question. So, first answer holds that it's mission is teaching me a halacha in muktzah. Mm. So then Gemara says before, why don't you tell me a better halacha about the chicken itself? That the chicken is muktzah. Why do I have to talk about the egg? Egg is a step two after the chicken. Mm-hmm. But the chicken, which is the primate, is a uh, first step, uh, could also be a muksa, in which case... Why would the chicken be a muksa? Then obviously the egg is There's only one way chicken will not be a muksa, if I designated it for shechita. Oh. Mm-hmm. It's called omedet lish, li, mm-hmm. lish If it's but, designated to But if it's eggs, designated to lay eggs... Then it would be. Then it's muksa. Then it's not designated for, for shechita. Yes, Obviously. and it's muktzah. And, the egg is muktzah. and it's not designated for food. It's Now it's an animal. Now, now it's a, a, a living organism. It's not food. Mm-hmm. If it's not designated for shechita, then it's non-food. It's animal. It's like a... It's like a it, it, view it as a... A horse. Cat. A horse. So maybe it's a muksa. Now, we know that, for example, cat is not a muksa because it's like a toy. You need to touch it. You need to play with it. Right. Dog is not a muksa. There is a machogit about that. Some hold, but... Most people the uh, real halakha is that cat and dog is But horse is not a muksa and yom tov, because at the end of the day you're allowed to transport. Carry. You're allowed to transport small items. You're not allowed to look like you're going to business, to you are going to work. Mm-hmm. So you're not allowed to transport big loads on your, on your horse. But if you have to transport small amount from one house to another, you're allowed. So horse is not muksa, mm-hmm. even though it's not food. It's an animal, but it's not muksa. Chicken could not be used. You cannot ride on the chicken. You cannot play with the chicken. You cannot do anything with the chicken, unless you're a kid. Maybe a kid could play with the chicken, but no adult is going to really play with the chicken. So muksa, so it remains muksa. So now, maybe Mishnah should have said, a chicken, uh, but Shammai say it's not Muqtza on Yom Tov, and Ben Hillel say that it's Muqtza on Yom Tov. So, because well, of why, this... Why mu- is there an opinion that says the chicken is not Muqtza, if we understand it correctly? Oh, no, there is no opinion that chicken is not Muqtza, oh. unless it's designated for Shekita. Oh, okay, right. So both, Ben Shammai and Hillel? Yeah, both of them. So because of this question, we had this question, by the way, but we had it before Pesach, so you may have already vague, you know, remembrance of it. So um, because of this question, Gemara doesn't, because of, Gemara is going to say now that because of this question, there is a second answer. Well, we don't In know. Other words, theoretically, theoretically, the first answer, uh-huh. Mukta, is good. But stylistically, textually, it's not good. It's not. It's not like it doesn't encompass the whole uh, the whole idea. Like, in other words, Gemara never wastes wor- words or talks about uh, non-precise concepts and ideas. If we could talk about better case, we're not going to talk about second best case. 
-huh. When it comes to the muktza, it's best to discuss the chicken. Because we'll know the egg automatically. Right. Because if chicken is muktza, then egg that it lays for sure is muktza. Kal khamer, yes. But my question is, how do we know originally that Beis Shammai and Beis Hill are talking about the exact same case in terms of maybe one is talking about a chicken designated for, like we said, for egg, for eggs, and then and the other one is talking about a chicken that's designated for shechita. How, how do we reconcile that? We, we don't know that. Are you asking, we have Machalik Beis Shammai and Beis Hillel. Yeah. How do we know if they're talking about the same case? Yeah. You see, if they would be talking about different two different cases, then it wouldn't be a machloket. Definition of machloket is mm -hmm. that we know which case we're talking about. Well, right, we're and in that very time, case, right. we say we have difference of opinions. Mm -hmm. right, right. That's the definition of machloket. Otherwise, Otherwise not a machloket. Right, right, right. But then the Gemara did bring this topic. Oh, no, we're talking about a case where it's a chicken, uh, it's, it's a chicken that's designated for, 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 for laying eggs. And then, remember, like the last... Uh, Oh, yeah, we spoke right, about right, it. So. right. Yeah, so Gemara said that when, when it starts with the second answer, it says we're talking about chicken that's supposed to lay eggs. Because if we, according to the first answer, we were talking about chicken that's supposed to, that stands for shechita. We, we had to, according to the muktza answer, according to uh, answer number one, muktza, yeah. we were supposed to be talking about egg, chicken that... <laughs> That's supposed to be laying eggs because otherwise the actual egg would not be even the muktzah because it's all food, it comes from food, and it is food. So we're talking about the chicken, uh, according to the first answer, that's supposed to be laying eggs. And its uh, produce, which is the egg, is muktzah. It's supposed to be laying eggs, it's, the chicken is muktzah, the, 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 the egg is muktzah. The only problem is, why are we talking about the egg? Let, let's talk mm -hmm. about the chicken itself. It, it's supposed to lay eggs, and it's muktzah, so it's a very good case. Tell me that it's muktzah. But then that doesn't say that it's muktzah. Maybe the chicken is not muktzah. Can you change your mind on Yom Tov and say, now I want this chicken to be... If you hold of if you hold of muktza, no, you have to change your mind before. You have to designate it before you. On Yom Tov, you can't change your mind. Uh -huh. So because of this problem, stylistic problem, problem with the wording it's only. Not a good example from muktza. Uh, we, we, we are changing oh, it from answer number one to answer number two, and that's called what's the key word for an answer number two? Uh, ha -ha what does achana mean? Delaying. Uh, preparation. preparation. What is the actual case? And Sunday, Shabbos, and then you have Sunday, is Shabbos, and then you you don't want to prepare for Sunday, which is a Yom Tov or something. Try again, try again. You you could you could say it two, better. Oh, two. There were two two days of Yom Tov. Something. No, 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 no. Shabbat Yom Tov is, is, is much Shabbat. Much better. Much better. Much better. Yom Tov comes out on Moshe Shabbat. And I would say Yom Tov comes out after, after Shabbat. After Shabbat. Okay. Same thing. Okay, okay fine. After Shabbat. So now, good. You, but it's only beginning. What and after that? What's the you're problem? saying that the chicken started making the egg on Shabbos and now it's Yom Tov and therefore you're preparing for Shabbos. Prohibited to you on Yom Tov. On Yom Tov because, because, it's, on because it was made on Shabbos. Shabbos. Yes. Chicken was, uh, the egg was laid on Sunday. Sunday. And we say that this egg is prohibited it's because on every egg that's laid today, it was prepped day before. What if you don't know? No, we know this is. Let's say you have a hundred eggs and you don't know which one was the one from today. Or the, like, can you say? Oh, that very good. We're, 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 Mishnah later on is going to say that we're talking about the case where a person checked the chicken coop. There's nothing there. There's no eggs, and, now and then he comes. Out, he checked it on Shabbat. No eggs. He comes in on Sunday, which is Yom Tov, and he finds one egg. So it, it's clear that egg. Very good question, by the way. That egg was laid on. If not so, if you have a safek, it's not also. So what if you don't look on Friday and you say? Actually, if it's safek, oh, we're gonna we're gonna figure it out. Safek, maybe we're gonna get into this. This is a very pretty fascinating. This this masakta is pretty fascinating. Because every detail needs to be weighed out, right? Exactly. Okay, we'll we'll get to it. What well, else? They find something. If somebody if somebody purposely doesn't check on Friday, and they, uh, they don't check every yom they check on yom I can say it was... If it's a it's mutar. Like, yes. Can you do it on purpose, Safek? Meaning, you Still, purposely don't check on the day before Yom Tov? Then you check on Yom on Tov purpose. and you say... Okay, you're asking now, you're really stamping me out. I don't know the answer, we're going to figure that. We're going to figure that. Alright. I mean, you guys, 
Rabbi, you just have to go out. Okay. Rabbi, with with milk, it would be the same problem, right? Uh, or it wouldn't. I'm sorry, it wouldn't be a problem with a cow. Okay, let's say you, you have a cow that's for milk. It's not a problem. It's not the same thing as an egg, a cow, right? Nice. <laughs> Milking a cow. You and- milk a cow. It's not a problem. On uh, sure. Sunday, which is Yom Tov. But, and it's after Shabbat, that's what you're asking? Yeah. You go to the gym no, no, no. Or are you asking just milking on, on I was just asking milking, but now it's yeah. you brought up a good, a good question. Right, right, right. <laughs> but you brought up a good question. Yeah. Right. So, so as far as after being uh, Yom Tov after Shabbat, we don't find with milk that it has to be prepped the day before. Okay. It could be prepped today also, so uh-huh. it's fine. Uh-huh. And also, we don't find... Is sur of milk that was milked on Yom Tov, Yom Tov right. even though the egg that was laid on because Yom Tov. Because it says danger to the cow if you don't milk it. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. They have to be milked or else they. they can but the question is, or... is the m- m- milk mutar to drink? Mm-hmm. Probably not. I don't know, but I heard that they have to be milked because it's like for them it's like using the bed. That's true. If you don't That's go, true. It, 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 they they they're in pain. It, it, Pain. That's true. The question is, if you milked it, is, is it mutar to drink? No idea. The answer is it's mutar. I'm gonna still double check why it's mutar. Why is it different than egg? Because this is lechatchil. You're allowed to do it, maybe because of the to avoid the the, the tar of the animal. It's a mitzvah to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you suggesting an answer? I mean, since you're supposed to be doing it, so then you could use I mean, the word. I, I, I see. Since you're allowed to do it, then you're allowed to use it. Okay, makes sense. Unless you're only allowed to use, do it just for the animal's benefit. Fine. Okay, so you see the second answer that's called hachana, a uh, prayer, has nothing to do with muktza, and it a separate reason. And we're gonna say. So, it, but the reason why it exists is because it wants to um, uh, improve on the first answer. The first answer was not good. The muktzah was the answer was not good, but the second answer is good, and that's why we're talking about an egg. What was the problem of the second answer with the first answer? Why is it talking about an egg? Let's talk about the chicken itself. But according to the first second answer, we resolved that problem. We have to be talking about the egg, not the chicken. Because really, the chicken is always permitted. There is no, according to second answer, there's no muksa on the chicken. Even if it's a chicken, that's it's supposed not, it's, it's not for Yom Tov. Yeah, they, that doesn't have all this. Not that's in it for Yom Tov. The chicken, there's no muksa. However, the egg is the problem. Oh, I'm actually I'm making a mistake because when he said the second answer, he said, we're talking about chicken that's supposed to be eaten, is designated for achila. That's why they couldn't use the chicken as an... That's why the Gemara couldn't use the chicken and say... That because the chicken, we don't want to be talking about chicken. Chicken, we know for sure. We want to find a case where chicken is for sure non muktzah Because it's designated for achila. So chicken, we don't want... We cannot talk about chicken. Exactly. Right, yeah. but the egg. But even though the chicken is per- permissible, the egg could still be prohibited, prohibited. if it was Shab- uh, Yom Tov after Shabbat. Right. So that answers your question, also that you asked last time. So, according to this, we resolve why we're not talking about chicken. We're talking about an egg. And why do we have the third answer? What's wrong with the second answer? The Gemara is going to say now that the people who give the third answer, they don't hold of this concept that if an egg was laid on Yom Tov, which is on Sunday, it's considered like Shabbat prepared it. Ah, us. they don't hold it. Okay. Okay, no. They don't hold it. Oh, right. that, 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 uh, You're saying it's a stretch. To say that Shabbat prepared it is not us. So let's, let's see it inside and we'll stop. We are, one, two, three, four, five, six lines from the, from the top. Kulu, Kulu, sorry, no, my mistake, not six times, those lines, um, but we are seven lines, no, the same six line on the, on, on, the le- on the end of the line, it says, Kulu ke Rav Nachman lo Amri, first, last word in line is Kulu, and the next is ke Rav Nachman, Kulu means all of them. All of the Chachamim who gave their answers, 
They, in other words, Chachomim, who gave uh, Rabba and Rabbi Yosef, who gave a second and third answer. Rav Nachman lo Amri. They don't say like Rav Nachman's first answer. In other words, two remaining Chachomim do not say like Rav Nachman, the one who gave the first answer. Kikushion, like the kasha that we asked on the uh, previous page, and the kasha was, why are we talking about the egg? Let's talk about the chicken. Ki Rabba, like Rabba, who said the second answer, Nami lo Amri. Also, no Chachamim say like Rabba, Hachona let lehu. What does let lehu mean? Let means they don't hold off. Not for, not for them. They don't hold of it. Let lehu, not for them. They don't, they don't hold of it. They don't hold of Hachona, like I explained, they don't hold that Shabbat could make or prepare it for Yom Tov. Ella Rav Yosef, my time Allah Amar Kribi Itchak. Why did Rav Yosef, who said that it's because of fruit that fell down, why didn't he say like Rav Itchak, who says that it's because of the juice that oozed out? You hear the question now? We had the last two. Juice that was that from what? From the fruit? Yeah, juice that was that from the fruit is prohibited, it. right. and it's prohibited. Maybe you will squeeze the fruit, right. and we said maybe the egg is according to Rabbi Yitzchak, Maybe the egg is asur. Chacham prohibited the egg because if we will allow the egg, people will drink the fruit, the juice that came out from the fruit, and if they will drink that, they will also squeeze the fruit, so it'll bring two isur. That for me. Honestly, that's a stretch. Okay, good. I accept it. But Gemara says that maybe, possibly, it's it, 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 that's what happened. I feel for food, you're allowed to squeeze, no? No. Like a lemon, you're allowed to squeeze a lemon. That's for a different salad, reason. No? It's not because it's, it's food. It's not oh. because it's food. We're going to get to that. So, you know why he didn't say that? Amar lecha, betza uchla, uperot uchla. You know why Rav Yosef mm-hmm. said his answer? Because egg is solid food. And fruit is solid, solid food. La fuki mashkin de la buchla. However, the uh, juice is not the same. That's a, like 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 you were saying. That's a stretch because they're not. They don't look the same. The juice is liquid. The egg is solid. We're not. Then it just if we allow the egg, they're not going to confuse it and say that the liquid is also is mutar. Mm-hmm. But Rabbi Yitzchak, my time Allah Amar Kirav Yosef, and Rabbi Yitzchak holds that it's because of the juice. Why didn't he say that Rabbi Yosef? Amalecha beitza belua. Beitza is inside. Right. And in that respect, it's more similar to the juice. Umashkin blew in. And the juice inside the fruit is also observed inside. La fuke perot de miglu To exclude the fruit that they're always outside. The fruit on the tree is outside, it is open, and when it falls out, it's open. That's why it's more similar. To the Jews, then to fruit. Thank you very much. We'll stop here. Thank you. 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 Thank